Hi everybody! In this video, we are going to talk about adding bots inside your work adventure map. And most specifically, we are going to talk about large language models and OpenAI GPT bot. Why would you want a bot in your map? Well, there are plenty of reasons. One of them is that you're not always here. And if you have open virtual offices and you have visitors, maybe you want someone to welcome your visitors when you are not here or to help newcomers. And well, to be honest, bots are really a lot of fun. So I'm going to talk to Astro, which is a nice bot. Um, I'm going to move just next to him here. And uh, I could, of course, walk and do a bubble. I can also ask him to come here with a summon button. So I'm doing that. Hey, David, how's it going? Any new updates on your video project? Yay. Okay, so Astro knows that I'm actually recording a video because I told him a bit earlier. Uh, I'm going to ask him a few questions like, um, you know, uh, who is the CEO of Work Adventure? CEO of Work Adventure yes. is Greg. Want to go find him? He's around here somewhere. Excellent. So the bot knows uh, who is the CEO because he knows the list of members around. I'll show you that later. Um, what do we have in the surroundings? Um, sure. Here's what's around us. Check out real life projects done with Work Adventure. Work desks, where the Work Adventure team is usually working. Yes. Lobby, the beautiful entrance to our office. Quiet zone, for those who don't okay. want to be disturbed, where would you like to go? Can you take me to the work desks? And you see, automatically I'm following the boat and we are going excellent to the work desks. So, uh, the bot can actually lead me where I want. We are Pretty at the cool. work desks. You can find Hugo, Greg R, Yanis, Alex, Antoine, Alize, and Matt working here. Need Excellent. to chat with anyone in particular? All right. Um, I'm not going to talk with someone. However, I'm going to do something a bit fun. Um, I'm going to ask the bot, can you send the recipe of an Apple pie to Alex. And you'll see the bot actually can do such a thing. Apple pie recipe has been sent to Alex. Anything else I can me. assist you with? You know what? We are going to ask Alex about it. Hello, Hello Alex. Hello. Uh, just a quick question. Did you get an email with the apple pie recipe from Astro? Uh, I'm going to check it. Yeah. All right. Yes. I Excellent. Do. As you can see, yes. Cool. The apple pie recipe has been received. Yes. So um, it works. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Alex. Sorry about it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. So. As you can see, the boat knows a bunch of things and can interact with its surroundings. Let me show you how it works. First of all, if I click on Greg R and I'm looking at its business card, I see he is CEO. And the boat actually has access to the data of all the members of Work Adventure, myself, I have a profile and everything in the information field here is known to the bot automatically. So when your users are entering information, the bot can use it to learn more about who is here. All right. The second step, I'm going to show you how the bot knows about the map. For this, I need to go inside. When you are inside your map in tiled, you can define zones. And the bot is actually reading the metadata from those zones. Here I have a zone called work desks. 
uh, it's defined as a class area and I have two specific properties. One is AI zone, which is a Boolean I need to set to true. It means the bot can read the metadata associ associated with this zone. And then there is a description. For the work desks, I'm saying the place where the work adventure team is usually working. Here I have the quiet zone, which has also a description saying, okay, people in the quiet zone don't want to be disturbed. So because we are using large language model, we must turn everything into text. The bot cannot see the map and understand the map, but it can understand the metadata associated with the zones. So on your map, you need to put those zones and simply put a short text explaining what is around and it will make the boat aware of what is around. Okay, let's now see how you can create your own boat and add it to the map. In order to create a boat, you need to go into the menu here and there is a boat beta version here. And from here, you can access the different boat you already created, or you can basically create a new boat. For this example, I'm going to create a boat and I'm going to call him Bob the Alien. And it's going to be an alien coming from the planet Mars. I can choose a skin. So let's uh, maybe choose this little guy here. Uh, there are several kinds of bots. I'm going to stick with OpenAI. I can select a default start zone. And here we have the most interesting thing, the chat instructions. So basically it is saying how the bot should behave. Uh, I have here a bunch of chat instructions explaining to the bot that he should act as an alien coming from Mars, because we want to have yeah, a bit of fun. Um, there is also one, inst one important thing, there are the move instructions. Uh, the boat can move by himself, itself, basically. And um, here we explain who the, who the boat should go see and who he should not. You can choose the model here. I'm going to click the create button. And when the boat is created, you can start it with the start button. Starting a boat can take a bit of time. Uh, it really depends on the uh, how the servers are scaled. Basically, in ca it can take between 10 seconds and 7 minutes. So be patient. And here it was kind of quick. So I'm going to see Bob the Alien. And let's see. Greetings, David. I am Bob the alien from Mars. Don't worry, I'm just a friendly explorer. Cool. How are you doing today? Would you like to explore this amazing office with me? How did you come here? I asked him to make, a, make things up. Great question, David. I traveled here in my super sleek Martian spacecraft, Excellent. the Starhopper 3000. It uses a combination of quantum leaping and warp drive technology <laughs> to zoom across the galaxy in the blink of an eye. So, ready to explore any cool spots in the office with me? All right. So, uh, the bot is actually answering correctly my questions, and he's following the prompt, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm I want to show you something here. Basically, if I click on Bob, I have access to the logs. Basically, the logs are the raw exchange between OpenAI and our bot. So it's a bit hard to read. It's basically JSON formatted. But if you want to know what was sent to OpenAI and how OpenAI reacted in the response, it's a great source to understand and deep dive into what's going on. Also, if uh, something goes wrong somewhere and someone complains someday, you have a trace of what has been said here. We keep the logs for three months uh, for you to be able to understand what is going on. All right. Now that you have seen what a boat is able to do, I want to dive into uh, 
how it works behind the scenes uh, in order to break a little bit the magic of what is happening. Basically, the boat is actually a working in sidework adventure in a script coded with a scripting API inside a headless browser that is running on one of our servers. When you go here and come on the map and talk to the bot, the bot is basically generating a prompt based on what you said, but also on a number of sources of data. Basically, the data of the map inside the properties of uh, the zone layers, but also it's querying the chat history if you already talked to the bot and it's querying the member, member's data from the uh, dashboard. It generates a prompt, sends the prompt to the OpenAI chat completion API. The chat completion API is sending that data back and the bot is answering. At the end of the talk, the talk is saved into our chat history database. So there is really nothing saved on the OpenAI side. It's mostly um, stateless, uh, a stateless API that is used here. However, indeed, we are sending uh, the prompts which could contain sensitive data. If you have troubles with this and if you want to be sure that your data stays safe, you should not use the OpenAI uh, bot. Instead, we provide the ability to use your own model. Of course, you will have to host your own model. It should be exposed over an all Llama API uh, compatible with OpenAI um, format. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So from within the board screen, if I click on edit here, you see I have many different kinds of bot. There is another video explaining the talk AI um, settings. What I'm going to talk to you about is custom LLMs here. Uh, if you select custom LLM, you will need to pass the URL of an API from a large language model. And here you need to put the model, which could be something like Mistral or any kind of other model. The model hosted here must be compatible with the OpenAI API. If you have a key for this model, you can put it here. If you don't have a key, just leave. Uh, if you don't need a key, just leave this field empty. After that, it's working just like OpenAI. You can provide the chat instructions. As of now, since Olama does not support a feature called function calling, the bot with custom models have more limited um, features than the OpenAI ones. For instance, they cannot move by themselves, but I'm sure it's going to change really soon as uh, things are moving quite fast in the AI field. So when you will see this video, maybe the feature will already be available. All right, thanks a lot for uh, listening to me. And uh, I'm, I hope you're, uh, a little bit pumped up by this great feature and that you will uh, want to try it. Uh, don't hesitate to give it a go and don't hesitate to send us your feedback. It's always welcome. Bye.